Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Two keys that will be required to receive from the careers of the anointing. For some of you, the Lord brought me this morning to teach you how to receive the mantle that is upon this great servant of God. For some of you, you love him. You have seen what God is doing in his life. And you are saying, Lord, how do I receive? Here is the answer. There are two biblical keys to receive from the anointed. Number one, honor. Number two, service. Number one, honor. Number two, service. Honor is a mysterious spiritual magnet that can draw to you that grace from a genuinely anointed servant of God into your destiny there are people who have never physically met certain people but have drawn the grace hallelujah second kings chapter 3 and verse 9 to 11 second kings chapter 3 watch this now the king of israel and the king of judah and the king of edom the Bible says they fetched a compass of seven days journey and there was no water. They wanted to fight and the cattle that followed them, they were dying of thirst. Verse 10. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them unto the king of Moab. They were discouraged. Now watch what happened. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servant answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. What was his credential for receiving? Service. He was never called the son of the prophet. He was called by his biological father's name. However, he poured water on the hands of the prophet, not knowing that the hand he was honoring and serving was the hand that would release that grace upon his life finally. He poured water on the hands of Elijah. Let me give you a very honest counsel. Dishonoring, discrediting, and fighting your prophet will destroy you. There are rules in the realm of the spirit. And I pray that God will show mercy to this our Afghan generation. And help us to really understand the mistakes that we are making. Let me tell you how it is in the realm of the spirit. When a father fights his son, you lose your honor. When a son fights his father, you lose your life. There are allocations to the consequences that follow. To lose your life there does not just mean you will stop living physically. The Bible says he that dishonoreth his father that his candle will be taken away from him. And he will, be, he, will be, he will be exposed to obscure darkness. Your relevance will vanish. Are we there? Yes. Do you know what it means to walk with Elijah? Go and read the Bible and find out the kind of person Elijah was. Don't you think Elijah was just a calm, loving person? Elijah, historically speaking, was a temperous person. Only God knows how many times he insulted Elijah. Where is this stupid person? Do? Don't play with me before I call down fire. And he says, sorry, sir. He would have said, see, let me tell you. By age, you're only two years older than me. You better stop all this shout and humble yourself now. If you have a character problem, go to God. Fathers do not need to be perfect to command your honor. That position has put them in a position where they are deserving of your honor forever. Please learn this. Because we have a lot of, um, I don't know what to call it. I've been praying for the body of Christ, especially our generation of preachers. May God grant us grace to not allow 
enlightenment and spiritual illumination make us bring a curse upon ourselves by our sheer dishonor for the fathers simply because of what we call enlightenment Noah took wine and slept naked. One of the sons came and saw the father's nakedness and was laughing. He even went to go and call the other sons and said, you can't believe it. Our father is naked. Come to him. And the other one rebuked him and came behind and covered him. Now, the strange thing is that when he got up, nobody had to tell him what happened. He got up and said, all of you, let me allocate blessings based on your honor and dishonor. Just because you saw my nakedness does not mean the man to left me. Nobody had to tell Noah the story that happened. Even if Elisha dies of sickness, beware, the bones still carry power. This is a very serious parable that the body of Christ must learn. Are we together? Yes, sir. He got up and cursed the one who laughed at his nakedness and said, a servant of servants you shall be. And you think God will not honor it. We have to be very careful. Anything that makes you get to a position where you believe the person who has made immense spiritual contribution to your life, whether directly as a father or any kind of supporting person, let me tell you the truth. If you see anything in the life of any father or anybody that you feel has a problem, go and pray. Go and pray. Your first part of call is to pray and say, Lord, you have shown them mercy. You don't know what it takes to carry certain mantles. If you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming for you. Are we together? There are many people who are not being attacked by Satan because they are not doing anything. Even if you call him, he will not come. Because your life is making such zero kingdom impact that he will not waste his time on that. Is that a lesson for us to learn? depth of your heart pastor I have been watching you and I have seen that God always shows up in your life I've seen that grace but it looks like my, I don't know why finances come helps come for me but help will only come when the problem has escalated and I hope you know there is timing to help if it does not come on time it will not serve the purpose if a plant is dying and water does not come, and when the plant is dead, rain falls, will it bring the plant back to life? Rain does not bring a dead plant back to life. So you need help on time. There are people who don't have that grace of on time. <clears throat> help will come always when they do not need it. You can come with honor and say, Sir, I know that I am a member in this church. I'm the head of the choir or head of whatever, but today... I am not just coming to the one who is preaching. I acknowledge you as touching the investment of God's grace. Let me tell you, even if he says, God bless you, I'm in a hurry. Just drop it in the offering basket. As for you, did the woman who drew virtue from Jesus, did she talk to him? She was making that discussion and Jesus was passing. There were all kinds of touch, but there was one that was a touch of honor and a touch of faith. Hallelujah. I have mastered the art of receiving the anointing from people because perpetually I have programmed myself to be in a position of honor and a position of love. I never ever will go and stand to see any father of faith even if I bump to, on them by mistake. I must use even if it is that one minute as an opportunity for honor. It is that foolishness that has brought us this far. Are we together? I was humbled by the calls and the prayers I received during my birthday just last week. Some of our fathers of faith in this nation, very early in the morning, here was their call. I was even surprised myself. 
ah daddy god bless you my son i want to bless you right there i got down my knees with my hands lifted and put the phone on loudspeaker and as they prayed you you know when somebody prays look there is a way you can pray give me a chance let me hurry up and go but there is a way you can pray from the depth of your heart ah no there, there are prayers you know that they came from the bowels of the spirit before we are done with this program after i speak over you i hope you don't mind if i plead with pastor to come and stand here and I, I, I plead, I can, I can stand, Pastor, and plead with you that he would stand here. I know he has been prophesying and speaking over your life, but that he would declare a blessing from his spirit. Let me tell you the truth. There are different levels of prayers and blessing. There are people you can even lay hands on and they fall down. And you too, you know that nothing came on them. Just a general grace to help them so that you can pass. But there are people who you know this is from the bowels of the spirit. I repeat, the key is honor and the key is service. Why will Jacob, Isaac, Rebecca was there to cook for him? But he said, no. Where is Esau? Go, he had Catulo. I hope you know he was not poor. Where did Jacob get the one that he cooked? Was he not at the back of the house? So there was already supply. He said, mm -mm, I want it to cost you something. It is a law. Go carry your instruments of war. Go and capture that animal. Make me venison. Make sure it is the one that my soul delights in. There is no father that blesses in anger. There is no father that blesses in sadness. Your assignment is to provoke that joy through honor and step back and watch the blessing flow are we learning there was someone who continued to annoy his mother pastor this man annoyed the mother one day she cursed him he would steal and do a lot of things and she said no i can't give birth to you and cause pain like this you know what she told him it was a curse she looked at him and said you will only stop stealing the day a rat stops stealing. This is a true story. If I'm joking, I will tell you I'm joking. This guy will come out of prison like this and within a few weeks he's back again. Because in her anger and her pain, there might be many people, let me tell you, the, the anointing was only designed to fight what was caused by Satan, not by God. The anointing only corrects what is antichrist. Did you get what I said now? The anointing only corrects what it is. And once you are standing in the will of God and the devil now comes, the anointing can work. But if it is God fighting you, is it the anointing that will rescue you? The anointing only corrects what is antichrist. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of God. But we are going to be speaking. God forbid. But who knows the kinds of atmospheres that people are carrying on their heads. Every good thing around them and yet nothing speaks. Because you are carrying the ill speakings of people. Job said in six things God will deliver you. Yes, seven. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That the tongue of men can be like a whip to your destiny. Let me wrap up. The last scripture. What happens when you really encounter a vessel that is anointed? 1 Samuel chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. First Samuel 10 from verse 1. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed you to be captain over his inheritance. Verse 2. We are reading to 7 thereabout. When thou art depart from me. That means now that you have encountered the anointing. Among the many things it can do. Are the following. Number 1. Then thou shalt find two men. By Rachel's sepulcher. In the border of Benjamin of Zelzeth. And they will say unto you. The asses, the donkeys, which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father had left the care of these asses and sorrowed for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? In other words, because that grace has come upon you now, what you are looking for now begins to return back. You see, what you call loss is a relative statement. It's dependent on the grace that is upon you. There was no mention of a prayer by Samuel to Saul. Father, restore the donkey. Once the anointing came, that mantle drew that donkey from wherever it was and took it back home. Could it be that by reason of what will come upon you, there are things that have left you. Just because they left you, they did not leave the earth. And under a certain condition, there is a force that will gravitate them from wherever they are to come and wait for you at the assigned place. Next verse. Verse 3. It says, then thou shalt go on forward. Oh, when the anointing comes, you don't go backward. It says, thou shalt go on Somebody say forward. Prophesy, say forward. In the name of Jesus, say forward. Thou shalt go on forward. You don't get anointed and go backward. Thou shalt go on forward from thence. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet there three men going up to God in Bethel. One carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread. And another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. Watch what happens. And they shall salute you. Say honor. And they shall give you two loaves of bread. Say favor. And thou shalt receive it from their hands. These were men who carried their bread peacefully from home. Going to go and do. That means there are many people holding things now that is not their own. They are caretakers. As at the time they got it, they did not know it's not their own. Very soon, God is going to be speaking to them. It's time to release what you have been holding. I hope you believe what you are hearing. Please give us that scripture. So you will meet three people. One holding wine. One holding three loaves of bread. And one holding three kids. And they will salute you and give you two loaves of bread. And then verse 4, it says, verse 5 now, it says, And then after that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where there is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come hither to the city, thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them, and they shall prophesy, verse 6, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Verse 7, and let it be when these signs are come, there are signs that validate that you are anointed. The anointing is not empty, it speaks. There are signs. Thou shalt do as occasion serve thee for God is with you. We've gotten there. Let's finish to 9. Verse 8 now. It says, and it and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee, and offer burnt offerings and, 
and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Pay attention to verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass. When? When? That means there are signs that will come to pass today. In the name of Jesus. All those signs came to pass that day. I have tested and seen what the anointing of the spirit can do. What genuine spiritual empowerment can do. How does a man come into Abuja with 20 naira, like pastor said, and today he's standing, look at the wonder-working power of Jesus. And when pastor was showing me one other time the land outside and all of these things, I said, my God, look how humble this man is. There are people who have been, there are people who were born in this city. Born in this city. And not to be sarcastic, they have tried and done everything. See, if God doesn't help you, bar, you can, you can weary yourself. There are people who, there are people whose relatives work in FCDA. Till today, they don't have a plot of land. And it's not like the relatives are wicked. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't forget this. What is on your head, oh, my people, is what controls what is around you. If your head is empty, your life will reflect it. Thou anointest my head with oil, but my cup runneth over. He does not anoint the cup. I can see what is on your head by looking at what is on your cup. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is the head. Don't blame the business. It is the head. God does not anoint cups. He anoints the head and then the cup runs over. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, every dimension of spiritual possibility has a grace connected to it, not just an instruction connected to it. There is the grace that brings favor. There is the grace that brings speed. There is the grace for visibility and influence. The question is, which one have you not obtained? This conference is another opportunity for you. In the next five minutes, I'm going to leave you with Jesus. We are going to pray and cry. Remember, you don't receive the anointing at your terms. You must subscribe with humility and say, Jesus, I am here. Some of you are receiving this for the sake of your family. Some of you are receiving this for the sake of the many destinies connected to you. Let me tell you this. I have seen very gifted people in this city and across the nations. And yet, because of certain anointings that are deficient in their lives. When you bring a chef to the kitchen and the chef sees you cooking, do you know sometimes, even without tasting, he can know you did not add this. Say, ah, no, 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 this will not come out well. Add this quickly. Add this. You have done well. Your pot is clean. You are doing well. But the ingredients you have are limited with respect to what you want to produce. And he can tell you, add this. There are others you don't even know. Hallelujah. I didn't know that this can be added to make this. And he adds it. And will spice up that meal. And by the time you serve the guests, you serve them with honor. There are many of us, the only thing in your destiny with respect to cooking like this is maybe rice, salt, and the pot. Ah, that's too ordinary for an extraordinary meal. There are ingredients that you need to carry. By the privilege of God's grace, among the many who have been gifted in the body of Christ, we have come as privileged stewards, them that sell. That if your heart is open to receive, God can add glory and honor to that meal. Remember what I'm telling you now. Imagine someone serving you a meal and he says it is jollof rice or fried rice. And all you see is rice, salt, and maybe oil. Appa, is that a good meal? Even if the person kneels down to serve you. For many of you, that's what you have been serving the world. That's why they've been ignoring you. This is too common. We have alternatives. But in this conference, that master chef is adding some apparatuskiata. Adding something. He said, add to this. Add to this, this one. Add to this, this one. 
he's adding to your sincerity wisdom to your wisdom character to your character fire now you carry these ingredients and anywhere and everywhere you go the fragrance listen there are people who do not need to come to the kitchen to know what is happening there there is a fragrance that comes from the kitchen is that true that you can be in the living room and literally you can be distracted not intentionally but by reason of the wonder happening in the kitchen and you get up and you will want to go to the kitchen gentiles shall come to your light there has to be something that attracts them Micah chapter 4 talks about this end time church it says that men will call upon themselves and say come let us go to the house of the Lord for there he will teach us his ways someone is ready to pray father my life is too ordinary let the grace that produces an extraordinary life fall upon me please cry to the Lord from the depth of your heart no distraction no looking around please pray forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting use it quickly oh fire let your mind be holy God's fire